All right, welcome back to Data Mass Concepts. So what we're looking at in this video is definite integral. Um, just a quick reminder. Uh, definite integral, for example, if we see an example like this where we have the integral of some function, right? Let us say we're dealing with the integral of some function, f of x, dx. Uh, this one, because we don't have any limits here and here, right? We are actually doing, in this case, we're doing indefinite integral. And when we actually do this, we would have a plus C. So whatever we get, all right, whatever we get, we're gonna have that function, the antiderivative gonna come here, plus C, which is a constant. Um, what we're about to do is we won't be having any constant because the constant would have cancelled out itself. So we're going to actually have, so let us say we, we're moving from C to M. This is called the definite integral where at the end of the day, we're going to get some number, maybe 12. We're going to get some value, right, um, to deal with. So these problems that we're about to do, we'll end up getting some values as our answers. Now, with these definite integral, the idea is that, let us say we have the integral of f of x dx. The idea is that after we do this, right, we're actually going to substitute the, the limits. So the b would have been the upper limit and the a would have been the lower limit. So basically, we're going to actually after we integrate and find that antiderivative, we're going to substitute the two limits, right, in the function is basically what we will be dealing with as we, as we go, right? Now, let's take a look at one of these problems. For example, we, have, um, we want to find the definite integral of 2x squared minus 12x plus 13 dx, and our limits are from 1 to 3. What this actually is, we're actually going to find the area under this curve moving from 1 to 3, all right? So let us take our integral. So we're going to use the power rule, right? And remember, when you're taking the integral, um, let us say we have x to the n, and we want to take the integral of that. We're going to add 1 to n, and then we're going to divide by n plus 1. So that is the whole idea of what we're about each time while we deal with this. So let us take a, a quick dive into this idea. So for the 2x, we're going to actually have 2x raised to the 2 plus 1 becomes 3, and then we divide by the new power, which is 3. For the 12, we're going to have 12x, x to the 1 plus 1, that's 2, divide by 2. With a 13, this is a constant, so we're going to actually have 13x. This is basically, uh, we can quickly simplify this idea. So this, remember now that this is moving from 1 to 3, right? So what we really have here that we're going to work out is actually 2x to the third over 3 minus 6x squared. So 12 into, um, 12 divided by the 2 is 6 plus 13 and we are moving from 1 to 3. Now, remember, though, we're going to substitute the upper limit first. So we're going to have 2 thirds, if you want to see it like that, and then it's going to be 3 raised to the 3 minus the 6 times 3 squared plus, I left off that, plus 13 times 3 subtract, and then we're going to have 2 thirds x, which is 1 to the third, minus 6 times 1 square, plus 13 times 1. So that's what we have. So all we're going to do is to make sure that we kind of not make any errors as we go. Um, so what we really have here is 2 times 3 to the third, that's 27 over 3 minus 9, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 6, and that's going to give us about 54, plus 
13 times 3, and that's going to give us 39. Minus 1 to the third is actually still 1, so we have 2 thirds here. Minus 1 square is 1 times negative 6. We still have negative 6 plus 13. So all we want to do is just to take our time. We could work this out. So 2 times 27, that's 54. If I divide that by 3, I'm going to get 18. And then negative 54 plus 39 is actually negative 15. All right, so that's negative 15 here. And then what I'm having coming out of this is that I'm going to have a um, minus. So I'm going to put a minus sign there. And in the bracket, this 13, this is 7, 7 and 2 thirds. So this is 7 and 2 thirds. That's what I'm getting right there. All right, so... Basically, finally, what I'm getting here is actually negative. Um, so 18 minus 15, that's going to give me actually 3 minus 7 and 2 thirds. And this is actually giving me negative 4 and 2 thirds. Or we could say negative 14 or negative 14 over 3. So whichever one we want to look at. So um, so this is what the idea is, right? So that is the value that we're getting, negative 14 over 3, or negative 4 and 2 thirds. All right, let's try another problem. All right, so in this problem, we're going to find the definite integral of negative x to the third plus 3x squared minus 2 dx, and we're moving from 0 to 3, and those are our limits. Now, let us take a quick look at what's going on right here. All right, let's take a quick look. So what we want to do is to integrate these. So um, the principle is we're going to add 1 to that, so that's 4. So we have negative x to the fourth, and we're going to divide by 4. Um, plus, we're going to add 1 to this, and that is going to give us 3x to the third, and we're dividing by 3. Minus, this is a constant, so we're going to have 2x. And where we're moving from, we're moving from 0 to 3. Let us simplify this to see what we have. We actually have negative uh, x to the 4th over 4, plus these will cancel right there. So we're looking at x to the 3rd minus 2x. We're moving from 0 to 3. All right, so all we're going to do here, we're going to substitute the upper limit. So what we have here is, so the negative is there, but in the bracket, we're going to actually have 3 raised to the 4th, and that's going to be divided by 4, plus 3 raised to the 3rd, minus 2, times 3. In our bracket, now what we actually have is negative, so we have 0, raised to the fourth, divide by four, plus zero, raised to the third, minus two, times zero. So that's what we have, right? Um, as you could see, all of that part around the back is going to become zero. Like all of this is actually zero here, right? So basically working with the front part, and we're actually um, that will actually give us our final response. So let us put it together. All right, so um, if we have three, if we do have three raised to, to um, three raised to the fourth power, that is about 81. So um, so negative 81, so if we have 81 divided by four, all right, so this is actually negative 81 over four, plus 27 minus 6. Negative 21 over 4 is actually negative 20. Negative 81 over 4 is actually negative 20.25. And then we're going to add 27 minus 6. So let us work this out. So negative 81 divided by 4 is going to give us negative 20.25 plus 27 minus 6. All right, let's put this together. So what I have here is actually 6.75 minus 6. That's going to leave me with 0 0.75, or you could say 3 over 4, right? So there you go. 
So um, whenever we do the definite integral, we're expecting to get a value out. And what that value actually represents is actually the area covered in um, square units.